Welcome my friends. I am so excited because in this video we get to talk about percentiles and box and whisker plots. So let's go ahead and get started. A percentile tells us what percentage of values are at or below a particular value. You may have heard percentiles used in the context of test scores. If you are at the 70th percentile of test scores, that means that 70% of the test scores are less than or equal to the value of your score, which also means that 30% of the test scores are at or above your score. There are three important percentiles that we are going to discuss. We have the 25th percentile, sometimes called the first quartile, or just Q1. We have the 50th percentile, which is really just the same thing as the median. And we have the 75th percentile, called Q3, or the third quartile. The reason why we call these quartiles is because they split our data into quarters. If we have the bottom 25% of our data, the first quartile is right at the top end of that. The median splits our data into two halves. And the third quartile is such that 75% of the data is below that value and 25% would be above. To find the first and third quartiles of a data set, first find the median of the data set. Then find the median of the bottom half of your data set, which will be Q1, and the median of the top half of your data set, which will be Q3. Here is a data set which contains the income in thousands of dollars for car salesmen. The median is the single value in the middle, or the mean of the two middle values if we have an even number of values. And in this case, we do have an even number of values. We have eight numbers in our data set. So therefore, the median is going to be the mean of the two middle values. So it's going to be between 52 and 62, which ends up being 57. The median of this data set is 57. And then once you found the median, you really have a bottom and top half of your data set. So the bottom half of our data set is going to be made up of the numbers 25, 40, 45, and 52. And the top half of our data set, which maybe I'll do in another color here, contains the numbers uh, 62, 76, 82, and 181. And so if we want to find Q1, we're going to find the median of the bottom half of our distribution. So the bottom half of our distribution contains the numbers 25, 40, 45, and 52. And the median of those four numbers is going to be, well, between 40 and 45, because once again, we have an even number of values. So Q1 in this case is going to be 42 and a half, the median or mean between 40 and 45. And Q3 is going to be the median of 62, 76, 82, and 81, which ends up being 79, the uh, mean between 76 and 82. In addition to considering the median, the first, and the third quartile, we can also consider the minimum and the maximum of the data set to have what is called the five number summary. The five number summary are just five numbers that kind of summarize a data set, just like the name suggests. So the, mean, uh, the minimum is going to be 25 in this case. The first quartile is going to be 42 and a half, which we already found. The median is going to be 57, which we already found, as well as Q3, which is 79. But then we will also tag on the maximum, which is 181. So the five number summary are five numbers that kind of summarize a data set. If you know these five numbers, you kind of know a lot about the spread of that data set and where kind of the numbers fall. And it always is going to consist of the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. Note that if there are an odd number of observations in your data set, you should exclude the median when finding Q1 and Q3. That's because, as you might remember, if there are an odd number of observations, there will be one single value in the middle, which will be the median. And our data set doesn't really nicely split into two halves. Therefore, we need to take the median out for the purposes of finding Q1 and Q3. Let's look at an example. Here's a data set which contains test scores, where we have an odd number of observations. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different values. So let's say we want to find the five number summary. Well, the five number summary is going to consist of the minimum, which is going to be 72, and the maximum, which is going to be 100. But we need to find the quartiles and the median as well to kind of fill in the middle. So uh, first, let's start out by finding the median. The median is the single value in the middle in this case, which is going to be 85. And then based on this note here, if we're going to find the quartiles, we should exclude the median for the purposes of finding those quartiles. So we're going to have a bottom half of our distribution, which is going to be 72, 81, and 84. The median of those numbers is going to be 81, so therefore 81 will be our first quartile. 
And then we will have uh, the top half of our distribution, which is going to contain the numbers uh, 92, 97, and 100. Once again, not including that 85. And the median of the top half is going to be our Q3. So altogether, our five number summary is the minimum of 72, the Q1 of 81, the median of 85, the Q3 of 97, and the maximum of 100. So just make sure that if you have an odd number of values that once you find the median, you exclude that from your data set, and then you find the quartiles from there. And once again, kind of the reason for this is because we really have to have two halves of our distribution to find the quartiles. And since if we have an odd number of values, we can't really split it into two halves. We have to take out one value. We take out the median, and then therefore we're going to have two halves to find the quartiles. Now frequently you might graphically display the five number summary by using what is called a box and whisker plot. So here is one of those data sets that we had from earlier related to the income of car salesmen. And we found the five number summary to include these five numbers. So if you want to make a box plot is sometimes what it's called, or we might call it a box and whisker plot, then you're going to create a number line, which kind of spans all of the numbers in our uh, data set. So in this case, the lowest number is 25, the largest is 181, so you're going to want to create a number line that kind of encompasses all those numbers. Then you're going to create a box, and at the beginning of the box, you should have the first quartile. So that's where the box should start, at the first quartile, and the ending of the box should be at the third quartile. And you're going to draw a line somewhere down the middle of the box, which is going to represent the median. From there, you're going to have the whiskers of the box plot, which are going to extend all the way to the maximum on the right-hand side or down to the minimum on the left-hand side. So this is what we call a uh, box and whisker plot, or sometimes just called a box plot. It graphically displays the five number summary. Note that you can tell to some degree the distribution shape based on a box plot, although it's not quite as easy to see as if we were using a histogram. So you may remember that a skewed right distribution has most of the values clumped towards the lower end of your distribution and then kind of tails off as you move towards the right. And that is sort of what we have here, right? We have most of the values are kind of clumped towards the left-hand side, and then we kind of tail off towards the right. So you may consider this to be somewhat of a right skewed distribution. An alternative form of the box and whisker plot indicates outliers with dots. So here is a, another version of a box and whisker plot but now the whiskers don't go all the way out to the max and minimum necessarily. They only go out to either the smallest value that's not an outlier on the low end or the smallest value that's not an outlier on the high end. So all these additional dots are observations in our data set, but those would be classified as outliers. Note that in this case, we have more of a skewed left distribution because most of the values are clumped towards the right hand side and then we kind of tail off as we move towards the left. Now, I've always had a little bit of an issue with the name box and whisker plot, because if you look at the picture, we actually have two whiskers. We have one whisker that extends towards the left-hand side, and we have a separate whisker that extends towards the right-hand side. So we really have two whiskers. So shouldn't it be called the box and whiskers plot? But no, they have called it the box and whisker plot. So, you know, what is the reason for this? Well, um, you know, the explanation that I've heard before is, well, actually, it is just one big whisker that goes all the way through the box. And uh, I find that a little bit hard to believe because if it was one whisker, wouldn't you draw a solid line through the box? And we don't really typically draw that. So I don't know. I really, uh, you know, my petition is that we really should change the name uh, of this to the box and whiskers plot. But nevertheless, uh, this is the name that has been, you know, brought down to us, the box and whisker plot. So I don't know. What do you think? All right. The next thing to talk about is the interquartile range oftentimes abbreviated as IQR, which is the range of the middle half or middle 50% of your data. You can find the IQR by taking your third quartile and subtracting your first quartile. If you're thinking about the box and whisker plot, the interquartile range is really just the length of the box on your picture, right? So if you take the third quartile and subtract the first quartile, you're really just finding the length of your box, which is representing the middle half or middle 50% of your data. So that's kind of something interesting to think about. Really, half of the numbers in your entire data set should fall between your first and your third, third quartile. And that's kind of ex exemplified here by the interquartile range. So here's that data set that we had from earlier. I got the first quartile, median, and third quartile. And so if I want to find the interquartile range, I can just take the third quartile of 79 and subtract the first quartile of 42 and a half, and I will get 36.5. And what that means is the middle half of my data set 
has a range of 36 and a half units. Or if I was to look, uh, actually we had this one right here, uh, the distance between our, you know, the beginning of the box to the end of our box is 36 and a half, right? Now, uh, one of the most common applications or uses of the IQR is to um, identify outliers. So this is not a universally accepted way to identify outliers, but it is nevertheless one of the more common methods. And uh, this method says that um, any value that is less than your first quartile minus one and a half times the IQR would be classified as an outlier or any value that is greater than Q3 plus one and a half times your IQR would also be considered an outlier. So really what you end up doing is you calculate these two numbers. Anything smaller than the first number would be an outlier and anything larger than the second number would also be an outlier. So let's go ahead and do it. So first calculating the, uh, the, the first little part here, Q1 minus one and a half times IQR, we would get uh, 42 and a half minus 1.5 times 36.5. And uh, if you type that into your calculator, you're gonna get negative 12.25. And so what we would do is we would look back at our data set and we would say, do we have any numbers that are smaller than negative 12.25? And we say, nope, we don't even have any negative numbers at all. So therefore, we don't have any outliers on the lower end. We would also do the second uh, calculation here, Q3 plus one and a half times IQR. Q3 is 79 plus one and a half times 36.5. And you would get 133.75. And then you look back at your data set and you say, do I have any numbers that are larger than 133.75? And indeed we do, we have that 181. So we would say that 181 is an outlier on the higher end. Make sure that you are uh, you know, respecting order of operations here and that you are doing the multiplication first before you do the subtraction or addition. If you do um, 42 minus 1.5, get an answer and then multiply by 36 and a half, you're gonna get it wrong, okay? So order of operation says you gotta do the multiplication first. Uh, your calculator will know order of operation, so it, you can just type this in you know, all at one time and you should always get the correct answer. Now we have been finding the five number summary by hand, but if you have a TI-84 calculator, we can also find it there. So here are kind of the instructions for how to find the five number summary on the TI-84 calculator but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you based on this data set right here. So a survey was done at Corwell Health to determine how long in months that clerical staff had been in their positions. The responses of 20 clerical staff members were collected and we're going to use our calculator to find the five number summary and then calculate the IQR. There are a couple other parts here as well. I am going to go ahead and you know uh, find the, the basic information for you and then I'm gonna set you loose and uh, you're gonna go ahead and try to find the other parts on your own. So let me go ahead and grab my handy dandy TI-84 calculator. So here it is. I'm gonna move this to the left so I can see the data set. Um, if I'm on the home screen, um, from here I can press the stat key and then uh, enter, and then I will have entered the stat list. And from here I need to enter all of these numbers into the stat list. So I'm gonna go uh, up above list one, I'm gonna press clear, and the down arrow to clear out that list. And then I'm gonna type in all of these numbers, all into the same list. So I know uh, it looks like it's two lists, but it's because I don't have uh, enough screen to fill it all into you know one column, but I'm gonna put all of these numbers into the first list. All right, so once you have all those numbers into your first list, uh, you can press the stat key one more time you can arrow once to the right so that you're on uh, the calculate menu and then you can choose the very first option which is one var stats so press enter if needed you may need to change the list here so if you press second and then two you could change it to list two but we have it in list one so we're gonna do second one for list one and then uh, we don't need anything for the frequency list we can just go ahead and calculate or if you had a ti-83 calculator you might not see this uh, menu here you can just press enter one more time and you would get the results we need uh, which are right here. So if we go ahead and scroll down, you'll see the five number summary right here. Uh, well, let me just note a couple other things the calculator gives us here that could be useful in some cases. It does give us the sample mean X bar. It gives us the sample standard deviation as well as population standard deviation. Remember the difference between those is dividing by N minus one in the sample case and just dividing by N in the population case. And then it does give us the five number summary here. Um, so uh, go ahead and you know write those numbers down. And then from there, uh, you should be able to answer the other questions here. So it says using your calculator, find the five number summary. So here is the five number summary. And then uh, also find the IQR. You can find the IQR by subtracting um, you know, Q3 minus Q1 to find that value. And then uh, find the lower and upper limits for outliers by plugging into the formula. So you'll get a lower limit, an upper limit. And then um, are there any outliers? Well, you'd have to 
determine if there were any numbers smaller than this first value or anything larger than the second value. And if that was the case, you'd say, yes, there are outliers, or maybe perhaps there are no outliers. All right, the last thing to talk about is side-by-side -side box plots or side-by-side -side box and whisker plots, which can be useful to compare between two populations. So for example, maybe we have all 100 senators from 1998, which were evaluated on a conservative scale from 0 to 100. So here we have the um, five number summary for two different kind of populations. We have the Democrats and the Republicans, and here are the box and whisker plots. So unsurprisingly, we can see that the Republicans tend to be a lot more conservative, and the Democrats seem to be, you know, not as conservative. Uh, a couple other kind of interesting, you know, things we could kind of uh, glean from this information is it looks like the spread is a little bit greater for Republicans, at least for 1998. This might be different if we made this in the modern era based on the current senators. But uh, there seems to be more spread here, uh, not quite as much spread in the Democrats. They're kind of really, uh, you know, all the way towards the left here. And then also note that uh, this is the form of the uh, the box plots where we have the outliers represented by dots. And those dots have been labeled here. So I don't know who these people are, but it looks like Jeffords and Sheffy <laughs> are outliers on the left side for Republicans. And we have Lincoln Edwards and Bay, who are kind of outliers on the higher end for Democrats. And kind of interestingly enough, we have, you know, some of the most conservative Democrats uh, were actually more con more conservative than the least conservative Republicans, um, at least in 1998. I'm not sure how they actually divide this, devised this uh, scale or uh, if they had to, you know, it, maybe it was based on their voting records or maybe there was some kind of questionnaire. But nevertheless, here we, uh, this would be kind of a, a common way that you might compare between two populations, making side-by-side -side box plots. All right, I think that is everything I wanted to talk about in this section. So hopefully you found it useful and I will see you again in the next video.